Okay, so my name is Aiden Grossman. I'm a currently an undergraduate student at UC Davis, and today I'm going to be presenting on register allocation cost modeling, primary, primarily for training machine learning models, and then also some of the um, future work and current work that I'm doing to work on improving this, um, not just for register allocation, but also beyond that um, for other problems. Uh, currently working on with this at two engineers on Goog at Google, um, Mercha Trofin and Andre Sikora. Um, so first of all, why are why are having these why is having these kinds of cost models important? Um, so we care primarily because bench we want cost models because we could just do benchmarking, but benchmarking can be pretty expensive, and it's also noisy. And ideally, when we're training machine learning models, we want to have deterministic reward metrics because you can't do noisy rewards, but it makes things a little bit more complicated. Um, and then also, the better the accuracy of the cost model, the more deterministic, quote unquote, model training is. So currently, we're using a very basic linear cost model that we'll get to in a little bit. And you're able to train machine learning models that will improve performance, but you'll train a bunch of them, and then you'll select the one that performs the best. So the training isn't very deterministic in the performance that comes out of it. And then also, higher accuracy will lead to better peak performance that we're able to get out of the models. So the current linear model shipping in upstream LLVM, it's just a basic linear model, takes in six inputs, which are just the counts of um, individual instructions, and then it's multiplied by approximate latency metrics, and then also weighted by machine basic block frequency from PGO data. So it does produce some signal, um, not necessarily a lot, but it definitely leaves a lot to be desired in terms of determinism for training. Um, it's used to train models that are currently shipping in production, like ones used to compile Google search. And you can definitely see certain metrics improve, like loads will remove once you train an ML model using that um, cost model. But it definitely leaves a lot to be desired. So in order to be able to see how good it is, we need an evaluation framework for this. So what we're doing is we're taking in source code in the form of, um, for this framework, I just have it set up to do annotated single source benchmarks. So you take in a single source benchmark, um, you put it into the compiler along with PGO data from a standard compilation. Um, and then we're fuzzing specifically the eviction decisions in the register allocator because that's what we're focused on um, for like the specific heuristic that we're replacing. We get a score out from the, um, from the machine function pass that I mentioned earlier. And then we also get an executable out. We benchmark the executable a bunch of times, take the average of that, and then we compare it with the score and we're able to do statistical analysis on that. Um, and then some specific metrics that we're um, using to evaluate this. So polar the polarity correct. So if we have a bunch of different fuzzed executables, basically how many how many times is the um, how many times is the cost model able to predict if there's a speed up or a slowdown compared to the ground truth data? Um, the mean difference in terms of um, how much how big the difference is between the predicted speed up and the actual speed up or slowdown. And then also the absolute ordering. So we're using a tau coefficient for that. Um, so the current linear model that we're using, um, the performance is, um, yeah, not particularly good. Uh, the polarity metric hovers usually around the 50% mark, and it's a binary variable. Um, <laughs> and then the average difference is usually a bit under 5% in terms of the predicted speed up and slowdown. But that's, it's, that's um, very dependent upon the actual spread of the benchmark, which is um, like fuzzing register allocations, you don't necessarily get a very big spread in terms of um, like the actual speed ups and slowdowns. Um, and then for this one, the ordering, it's not really able to order anything particularly well either with the tau coefficients usually being around zero. Um, so these metrics do improve if we're using more ideal execution conditions. So if we take a benchmark that has very few like level one data cache misses, these metrics are able to improve quite a bit. Um, like the polarity correct maybe goes up to around 70%. Um, average difference stays the same, and the talk coefficient goes up to maybe around, around like 0.5. And then um, the other thing to note is it's a linear model, so we could just do a linear regression to try and see if we can get better performance there. And that will significantly improve performance, but significantly improves performance on an individual sample, which doesn't offer any generality. You'll, you'll do a linear regression on one sample, um, same benchmark, just a different sample, and it'll perform about the same as it did before. So, um, so to work on improving this situation, um, we're using, um, tested out using new state-of-the-art basic block cost models. Um, so they're pretty accurate. Um, Uica, which is the one that I used, um, gets 
to within about one to two percent accuracy in terms of latency, assuming ideal execution conditions. Um, there's LLVM MCA too, but it's not particularly as accurate. Um, and then they're also reasonably fast. Um, so yeah, it models a lot more execution, a lot more like conditions of execution that you'll see in modern pipeline super scalar out of order CPUs. Um, and then yeah, another thing to note: learned models are learned cost models in this specific area are pretty. Um, Performant too, but we'll get to that in a little bit. So changing up the process a little bit in order to um, evaluate it. So we're basically just taking source code and PGO data in again. Um, instead of just doing everything in the compiler, we're taking basic block frequencies, emitting that um, after all the compiler transforms at like around the time of ASM print, um, and then also getting an executable out of that, that. And then we feed that into the basic block cost model. So we get we extract all the basic blocks from that executable we find latencies for it, and then we're multiplying that by the, um, by the machine basic block frequencies in order to get an overall cost for um, the small applications that we're looking at. Um, and the performance of using these benchmarks, um, like somewhat as expected, definitely um, a lot better than the linear model. Um, yeah, the percent error drops by up to 50% on the same benchmarks. And then, um, yeah, the poor, the, Polarity correct me measurement, we're not hitting, it's doing a lot better than just randomly guessing like the linear model is essentially hitting um, depending upon the benchmark. And then it's also, the big thing is it's also able to cover um, somewhat surprisingly since they don't actually model any non-ideal execution conditions. But like with the benchmarks that I've tested, we're seeing it like able to model cases fairly well where there are events like level one data cache misses. Um, yeah, and then the actual accuracy of order of like ordering is about the same. Like if there's non-ideal execution conditions, it's not really able to order anything. But another thing to note about the ordering metric is um, there's a very little spread, especially depending upon um, the execution conditions. So even like a little bit of noise in the ground truth data will end up impacting the ordering there. So um, even if the tau coefficient isn't like one, it can still be a pretty um, good ordering. Um, and then so limitations of this work and some of the future directions that we're exploring specifically with cost modeling for this. Um, so right now we've only focused on like small annotated single source benchmarks and that does not represent um, like real world code. Um, so we're looking at extending that and then um, like just making it apply to broader, bigger real world apps. Um, and then also even just achieving ideal execution conditions um, where we're like, because we're like not trying to model things like front end conditions, um, like looking at this, but that can be hard to achieve even with just like these simple real world apps. There was like one of the executables that I was looking at and then um, like there was a lot of spread. There was the standard deviation of individual benchmarks was fairly high because sometimes it would just run into front, a bunch of front end stalls for um, a reason that I still haven't determined. Um, but yeah, so getting ground truth data that's um, really good is hard. And then we also only fuzz part of the register allocator. Um, so in terms of uh, like why these models fail and then um, like where we need to improve. So they all assume an ideal execution environment, like level one data cache misses for, and like um, all cache misses for like register allocation specifically where you're primarily looking at like where you're placing um, loads and stores is a very big deal. And yeah, we're not modeling that at all. And then you'll, you can get orders, order of magnitude differences where if you have an LLC cache miss, you'll, um, like you could go from 20 cycles to 400 cycles within an individual block. Um, so yeah, even just being able to like say that there's an event, you can model it significantly more accurately than what we're doing currently. Um, yeah, and then we're also not, not really specific to register allocation, but in the broader case, um, like these models don't cover anything beyond just an individual stream of instructions. Um, so if we wanted, if we want to do something like see how something imp impacts branch predictions, um, which can be a problem even in cases where you wouldn't think it would be, um, like it, um, yeah, we're just not modeling that at all right now. Um, so one of the things that we want to work on, um, so I used Eureka for this work, um, as the basic block cost model. Um, and that's, it's very accurate, but only on Intel CPUs and even then only specific. It works on most of the microarchitectures, but ideally you want to be able to apply it to other architectures and um, like even just AMD x86 CPUs. Um, so we want to work on um, using learn, learned cost models for that, where essentially instead of having an analytical cost model, um, we'll be using a neural, ne a neural network to 
that's trained on a bunch of latency data. So um, we're working on that. Ground truth data has a lot of collection nuances. So the data sets that are used to train um, right now are not particularly good. Um, I'm working on productionizing that in LLVM exegesis, and I should be publishing patches for that soon. Um, yep, and then also these model, the current, one of the big issues with current cost models is the data sets just model, they use runtime instrumentation to extract code, like b basic blocks, because um, the authors didn't want to do um, static disassembly, which we now have better infrastructure for. Um, so you'll get these canonical patterns that, and then the network, the um, machine learning models won't be able to learn things properly. So they'll detect things like register permutations won't actually have any latency effect, but the models will think it like has a massive effect on latency of individual instructions. So um, hoping, hoping to resolve those problems. Um, and then also just collecting profile information because not only are events like cache misses a function of um, the code specifically that's running, but also the data that the code is operating over. So we're working on building pipelines out so that we can collect that information from runtime and then be able to feed that back into cost models for um, this sort of um, thing. Yep, and then I have all of um, the code that I use for the evaluation here and then some of the benchmarks available in my GitHub repository. And then, uh, yeah, questions? Okay, great. Uh, questions? Hi, uh, thanks for the information. Um, I was just wondering in a practical example, uh, like you said um, you would do, want to improve the profile collection. I, I guess that means also the basic block um, information. Would you do that like do you do with PGO information in compiler RT or would that be a separate kind of process you have to run on the executable afterwards? Yeah, so it would definitely be a runtime process that you'd be running because yeah, you don't have any way to really statically predict when those events are going to happen. Um, how exactly we're doing that, we're still figuring it out, but probably um, like probably using the Linux perf tools and then correlating events to individual blocks using that infrastructure is what we're thinking currently. But yeah, like compiler RT infrastructure to read performance counters or something, um, or using LLVM X-Ray, I've looked at using that too. So we have a, we're investigating a couple options for that. Okay, thank you. Hi, it is a nice talk. So I have a couple of questions. Firstly, uh, what is the input to the model? Uh, is it MIR, which is uh, after register allocation? Uh, so it depends. So specifically for the um, the linear model that we're shipping in upstream right now, um, it's just a function. It's just a machine function pass that gets called around register allocation time, and it operates over MIR. Um, and then for the basic block cost models that I use that I um, showed later. So we're using gen like extracting assembly from the executables that get generated for that. Upon assembly, right? Yeah. And secondly, the what is the cost model predict? Is it throughput? So we're just predicting the latency. So how many cycles something will take? Okay, thank you. More questions? Okay, I got one. Um, so there are tools out there. I mean, there's like you know scientific papers on determining cache hits and misses for accesses. Like they do all, everything from you know, rec instrument, record all the accesses, and then mm -hmm. you know, look at the traits of that after that. So are you interested in, in that or more on a statistical modeling thing that you said earlier, which is a different beast and might give you, you know, statistically correct results, but not actually accurate. Yeah, so I'm thinking what we're probably going to end up doing is looking at the statistical statistical method because um, working trying to like tag individual instructions can just being able to find like what instruction is resulting in a cache miss can be um, pretty complicated because um, we're like we're looking like I'm looking at doing that but like doing it in an individual basic block like you're normally using specialized techniques like uh, 
you'll there's like one technique called like the sushi roll where you'll um like slowly unroll a basic block and then you're you're able to correlate performance counter events with the cycles counter um by basically having it overflow and then that can generate an interrupt so you're able to like execute it like one cycle at a time and then you're able to um like see you're you're able to use that to um like see which exact instructions are hitting that but otherwise it's you're it's difficult to um determine like which exact instructions or blocks are um like hitting those events so probably more of a statistical method if we're since we want to ideally implement it in production. Okay, that makes sense. And then maybe one more question. So you use this model to predict the latency and then thereby what the, what the register allocator should do, right? Yeah. So we have given up on the idea that we look at the, you know, just output of the register allocator and, and say, okay, it's good or bad according to some other metrics or are we just, you know? Yeah, so I haven't really invested, like looked at specific metrics, but I mean, there's usually a lot of um, like, there can be a lot of like counterintuitive things that will happen when you're just like trying to look at um, like whether or not some like emitted code from um, like some pass is gonna be like quote, like quote good or quote bad. So um, like just moving to um, these sorts of things should like hopefully improve the state but All right makes sense perfect let's thank the speaker again